ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the School World Order. I am your host, the Dallas professor, John Kleisig, author of School World Order, the Technocratic Globalization of Corporatized Education. All right, and today we're going to be talking about digital vaccine passports designed for social credit surveillance capitalism coming to a school near you. Now, if you don't know what social credit is, all you need to do is look at the Sesame credit system that has been in place in China for several years now. It partners with the Alibaba Corporation. Basically, what it does is it data mines not only social media activity, other online activity, in addition to purchasing history, but they also have real-time biometric facial recognition in real space, and they monitor your actual public behaviors in order to create these social credit scores that not only determine loan access, but also access to the larger public sphere, including healthcare, education, transportation, due process, housing, even food, they can put you on a political blacklist, okay? But it's basically an Orwellian big data system that tracks everything everybody does for the sake of establishing trust, okay, or social stability. Now, in my book, which was published in 2019, I argued that education technologies were going in the direction of facilitating social credit algorithms through a combination of the cognitive behavioral adaptive learning software and also the socio-emotional learning biofeedback wearables and other programs. And I've since written several articles documenting how the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's Reimagine Education campaign with partners with Google is moving towards big data learning analytics that can be plugged into distributed ledger technologies designed for social credit algorithms. In addition, if you check out my interviews on my website, you can see that several times since the beginning of the lockdown, I have made the argument that contact tracing and digital immunity passports will be used to usher in social credit by blurring the lines between FERPA and HIPAA, by requiring students to carry electronic health records in order to gain access to the education system. We have blurred the lines between FERPA and HIPAA, and that this policy could be expanded to include workforce access and several other researchers and scholars have made the same argument that digital immunity passports can be used as a platform that can be used to track and trace all sorts of other biopsychosocial algorithms for various public health purposes, criminal justice purposes, and others. So today, I want to let you all know about a specific vaccine passport platform that I recently discovered through a company called Corporate Screening. Now this company specializes in corporate background checks for employee hiring. So it conducts risk assessments that look at everything from whether or not a person has a particular educational degrees or other professional certificates, but also they they can check drug testing, other criminal background checks. Uh, And apparently this company also specializes in a platform called Immunitrax, which is a digital immunization record on a mobile device. And this company also promotes what they call blockchain identity management. So one company is facilitating on one suite of platforms, all on one mobile device, records that contain all of the students' academic records, criminal records, healthcare records, and workforce records. So if you combine healthcare records, education records, and criminal justice records, in addition to employment records on one digital device, and you plug it into a blockchain system that's tied into the internet of things, you have real-time social credit system, or you at least have the infrastructure for that. So let me show you what we're talking about here, and let me tell you the story of how I stumbled onto this. So it came to my attention that one of the schools where I work 
was considering a contract not with corporate screening, but with a company that partners with corporate screening. And that company is the one that you're looking at right here. It's called Platinum Educational Group. You'll see they specialize in testing, scheduling, competency tracking. That's a reference to competency-based education, which is related to their adaptive learning computer programs that they use for their testing services. Okay, and compliance reporting experts. Now, that's language that is used excessively by corporate screening. So it was one thing that I noted right away. Now, the specific test that the school wanted to contract with was EMS testing. So these are mainly standardized tests for medical field, including nursing. And here we have emergency medical services or emergency medical technicians. And they have other categories as well. But this is the one that was being considered at the school. And you'll see here that it says EMS testing is a cloud-based online computer adaptive testing solution that delivers content constructed to help EMS students prepare for these various certifications, EMR, EMT, AEMT, and then paramedic. Okay, so this one has several certifications under it. Okay, so notice here, again, the computer adaptive testing language, which refers to adaptive learning software, which relates back to the competency-based education pedagogy that I showed you on the homepage. Now, I've done a previous video in which I describe what exactly is competency-based education and how it fits into outcomes-based education and mastery learning as a smorgasbord of pedagogies that interrelate. I won't go on that detour here, but if you want to know more about it, you can check out this video up here. But I did want to know the connection between their competency-based pedagogy and their adaptive learning methodology through their technology. All right, so let's break down what is adaptive learning and how it's going to relate to social credit algorithms. All right, now let's take a look at Platinum Educational Group's definition of what they mean by adaptive learning or computer adaptive testing. Okay, so the headline here for this page says, What makes your tests adaptive? Scroll down, it says our adaptive tests adapt based on the student's responses to the questions that are part of their test. If a student answers the question correctly, the next question the student will see will be a statistically harder question. If they answer a question incorrectly, the next question will be one that is statistically easier. So this one sentence summary is basically describing to you the basis of the stimulus response operant conditioning algorithms that are the structure of the programmed instruction designed in these modern teaching machines, which are just the digital versions of what B.F. Skinner came up with back in the 50s. You can trace this back to the earlier behaviorist psychologists like E.L. Horndike, and you can go back to the classical conditioning psychologists like Pavlov, and then the originator, Wilhelm Wundt, and his stimulus response method. I documented excessively in this book, but just for the sake of this video, let's just take a look at several sources which verify the history I've given you as far as the background to adaptive learning. Okay, so study.com, adaptive learning, definition, history, and methodology. B.F. Skinner, 1904-1990. Adaptive learning arrived on the educational scene in 1950. Behaviorist B.F. Skinner is credited with creating the method. Skinner constructed a teaching machine that so forth. Here is Guide to Adaptive Learning, schoolcounselor.org. Although adaptive learning is an idea that has been around for quite a while, originally developed by behaviorist B.F. Skinner during the 1950s, the introduction of technology that can help facilitate the process is something recent. Adaptive learning is essentially an online computer education system that changes the presentation of so forth. Okay, here is obsidianlearning.com. In this instance, the Wikipedia description is more closely aligned with the intent of the term adaptive learning as coined by 
behaviors, we have scares. Skinner is credited with developing the method in the 1950s. When he constructed a machine that focused on effectively teaching new concepts instead of reinforcing memorization. Actually, B.F. Skinner was the guy who said that he could make a pigeon a high achiever on a reinforced schedule. So, as I mentioned, this is actually out of the behaviors conditioning method of psychology, which essentially boils a human being down to animal instincts that can be pretty much programmed if the environment is structured in the proper manner. So it's more about behavioral reflexes than it is about either memorization or teaching new concepts. Here is adaptive learning, what it can do for students, GovTech. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, so the title is Adaptive Learning, What It Can Do for Students. That's Kesha Ray, January 25th, 2016. Let's go down to where we're talking about Skinner. Adaptive software isn't for script. That task is reserved for the teacher. Rather, adaptive software is a framework of concepts, practices, and guidelines. It goes back to the 1950s and based, and is based on behavioral science. Remember BF Skinner? When artificial intelligence was introduced in the 1970s, we saw the beginnings of the true impact that adaptive learning could have in K-12 and higher education. Adaptive learning helps teachers personalize instruction so concepts can be introduced in chunks that are individualized and matched to each student's learning level. So that is basically, if you think back to the description of that uh, adaptive learning algorithm at Platinum Educational Group, right? It scaffolds the learning for the student based on how he or she responds. So if they're quick and effective with their responses, it gives them harder ones and moves them faster. If they uh, have more difficulty with their responses, it gives them less challenging questions and sort of remediates them. And in that way, it is individualized or personalized. So back to this article here, it says, it's been shown that students who participate in adaptive learning curricula have increased achievement according to various studies on the subject. Adaptive software often utilizes a machine learning algorithm that learns information from data and is integral to data analytics. Many fields such as finance, biology, and energy already utilize machine learning. It appears education is the next frontier to benefit from this type of software. So this is a good place to jump off and show you an example of that at Platinum Educational Group as demonstrated by their EMS testing analytics on their own website. So let's go back to Platinum Educational Group. You'll see here it has a breakdown of their adaptive test results. Okay, this article will break down the adaptive test results page for an individual test and explain a bit more about what the results you're seeing actually mean. Got a little video here. I want a copyright strike, so I won't play it. But you'll see here are some of the metrics, some of the learning analytics. So they have a summary, which provides an overview of all the other categories. And you'll see here that not only does this adaptive test personalize instruction in terms of the stimulus response algorithms, making things either more challenging or more remedial based on the students' responses, it's also going to rank all of the different students into the mean, median mode and all these other group metrics. Okay, so they're gonna put them in percentiles here and it says this number shows in what percentile you rank. This compares how you did on this particular test with all other students. And in my discussion with uh, a representative from Platinum Educational Group in a phone call, it, it was expressed to me that all of those metrics do not just compare you with all the other students in the class that you're in based on the school that contracts for the test. It puts you in a national database. It's not just limited to the school that you're in. It's going to compare you to anybody that took this test, basically, in one big database. Okay, and so you can see here some of those metrics. So 
So basically what you have here is a personalized or adaptive system of instruction that not only individualizes the delivery of the actual lessons, but also it's going to create a personal profile based on your overall metrics of taking the test. And then it's going to also create group analytics and aggregate your data into that in order to get these larger predictive analytics. Okay, so this is where we can start to look at how this relates to social credit because the social credit system, as we mentioned before, it aggregates all of your data, all your biological data, all your psychological data, all your workforce data, all your criminal justice data. It puts it all into one digital profile that you're gonna carry around on one application or one device and that's going to determine your access to all those different fields in the larger public square. So through this test, we, we could have at least some data for one of those categories in that larger aggregate. So let's take a look at the privacy policies of the company to see what might be the implications of how they might share that stuff. Okay, so you can see here we're back at Platinum Educational Group. We're looking at their privacy policy. Let's just take a look at what type of data do they collect and in what ways do they potentially share? So the first thing I noted was browser information. Okay, so you can see under personal information we collect, it says information automatically collected. Our servers and third party service providers may automatically record certain information about how you use the site such as internet protocol, IP address, device and browser type, operating system, DNS, the pages or features of the site that you browse and the time spent on those pages or features, the frequency with which you use the site, the links that you click on or use and other statistics. We collect this information in server logs and by using cookies and similar tracking technologies, see our cookie policy below for more information. So that's a lot of the typical data that you see for behavioral advertising algorithms. In fact, you can see here under personal information we collect that Platinum Educational Group also aggregates data from third party sources. So it says here, information we get from others. We may obtain additional information about you from third party sources such as service providers, vendors, social media sites, and advertising agencies to provide you with more relevant information about our services. So yes, they do aggregate data for behavioral advertising. Furthermore, they do in fact share user data with third party businesses. So if you take a look at the section entitled how we share your personal information, you can see down here, it says, we do not share your personal information with third parties without your consent, except in the following circumstances, which are sponsoring organizations. We share the results of testing and training with third party organizations who paid for the use of the Platinum Planner or EMS testing solutions, the solutions, or otherwise made the solutions available to you, sponsoring organization. Service providers, we may share your personal information with third party companies and individuals as needed for them to provide us with services that help us with our business activities and to promote our services to you. A list of our current service providers is available upon request. Business partners, we may share your personal information with our business partners who offer a service to you jointly with us. A list of our current business partners that have access to certain personal information we collect is available upon request. Now, in my conversation with a representative from Platinum Educational Group, I asked whether any of this data was shared with corporate screening and it was confirmed that they do in fact track student competencies in order to help corporate screening with their compliance services regarding employee hires and other background checks. So I should also point out here that behavioral advertising algorithms and adaptive learning algorithms are ostensibly identical and that they both use the stimulus response, cognitive behavioral psychological metrics. So if you take a look at this article here from 2012, published in EdTech Digest. You'll see that it says, broadly speaking, there are two ways to build an adaptive learning platform. The first is an approach similar to how Netflix 
makes entertainment recommendations. Or in other words, how Netflix advertises movies to users based on their individualized or personalized profiles, which involves creating a learning map that consists of an aggregate of various learning analytics that mimics or mirrors the user profile on a Netflix account. This is important to note because if the adaptive learning algorithms that will be calculated when a student takes a test, if those algorithms are the same as the behavioral advertising algorithms that I showed you in the privacy statement, then the adaptive learning analytics can be readily and easily transferred and shared with third-party businesses through the behavioral advertising pathways. And this would warrant a reasonable cause for concern, especially when we consider the relationship to corporate screening, which has the ties to all the various forms of background checking, employment, hiring, criminal backgrounds, health records, educational records. So you can see here, Platinum Educational Group, your allies in education page, we scroll down, you've got lots of partners in the medical field. You can see our partnership with Pearson in partnership with Brady. If you keep coming down to the technology section, you'll see this company here, Corporate Screening. All right, and it says Corporate Screening is a preferred student background check product of many leading schools, providing fast, easy, and reliable background checks we meet the needs of students in a variety of disciplines. Okay, so let's take a look at corporate screening and what they do. Okay, so let's make this a little bit bigger. It says more than a background check, connecting innovative technology with uncompromising human effort. We've created an accurate and efficient screening process you can depend on. So let's go down and just see what some of the other stuff that they traffic in down here in their solutions section at the bottom of the page to so see solutions okay so obviously background checks look electronic i9 services so tax information basically or tax status so you could tie this into financial tech or fintech health and drug screening so there's your health care records here's your financial records background checks could be your criminal justice records but of course they got criminal record check right here specifically and to go along with that, look, electronic fingerprinting. Let's see what we got here. Oh, in that queue. Wouldn't you like to have your thumb biometrically scanned and kept somewhere on somebody else's computer? Wouldn't that be great? So let's see what else they had down there. Let's just go back down at the bottom. Okay, public record searches. Continuous exclusion monitoring. That has to do with uh, healthcare exclusions. Compliance, there's that language that's used on the about page of Platinum Educational Group Compliance Reporting. And go back where we were. We're talking about compliance services for their background checks. So again, they're, they're using some of that same language, which reasonably warrants concern that perhaps, again, that some of this data from the students using the testing services could perhaps be shared for compliance services when they both traffic in compliance services, and they also use the behavioral advertising algorithms. So put those two together and put them together as partners. That's a reasonable cause for concern. Okay, so let's look where they have specific services for student data and student background checks. This one emphasizing healthcare students or students in the medical profession. So verify student solutions for health profession programs. Again, real time access to custom background check, drug screen, and look at this immunization compliance management. What are they talking about? They are talking about vaccine passports, digital immunity passports. You can scroll down here and you can see immunization compliance technology meets skilled expertise. Add a layer of clinically focused analysis to your verify student slash Medicat one ICM integration. So that's another one of these healthcare record or electronic health record applications that you can put on this verify students application 
which goes on your mobile phone or your other digital device. So let's just take this time to know that this is the perfect example of what people like Naomi Wolf and uh, Ryan Christian of The Last American Vagabond have been suggesting can be done with the vaccine pass or platform, right? And this particular immunity passport, digital vaccine passport, is an application that can go on your mobile device and it is called Immunitrax. Immunitrax offers timely analysis and responsive support from a team of licensed nurses and healthcare professionals who assure students submitted information is valid and meets clinical site requirements. Okay, and then check out here some of the features of this uh, immunization compliance management reimagined. Check that out. They're using the reimagined language of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's reimagined education program that I discussed earlier for an example of how ed tech is being built for social credit databases. And then there's also reimagined policing and reimagined everything else right now with the Great Reset fourth industrial revolution. But tying it back to my original point, they're again using the same rhetoric here to tie together educational technology that links together your education records, your healthcare records, criminal justice background reports, and employment history. Okay, and so if we scroll down here just a little bit, you can see that this Immunitrax is capable of being synced with immunization registries to reduce the need for student supply vaccination histories, right? So in other words, instead of having to go through the traditional appropriate chains of HIPAA compliance through the medical institutions themselves, the, the student will just carry around this mobile device that tracks their health records in real time and can be linked up with other databases that they need to access, whether it be a hospital or school or otherwise. But to get back to the reimagined rhetoric being used in this corporate screening promotional for vaccine passports, and by the way, I, I didn't even realize that this was in here when I set this up to do this video. Let's take a look at the actual implications for a social credit platform that integrates all of this through what they call blockchain identity management. So this blockchain identity management platform is being referred to here as the self-sovereign identity verification systems. What is self-sovereign identity verification and how is it changing background screening? So you can see that first of all, it's going to integrate blockchain technology Okay, and that blockchain technology will go on a digital wallet. So this blockchain platform is also going to be linked to potentially your bank account, cryptocurrencies, or something else that is fungible that can be used as a currency. Okay, so what else can it put on there on this digital wallet? Well, all sorts of personal information including date of birth, social security number, addresses, education, and other credentials such as professional licenses, employment history. Okay, and then it says, although self-sovereign identity verification is still in its infancy, it is anticipated to grow at an accelerated rate in the next several years. Gartner predicts by 2025, this new approach to identity management will seamlessly converge with blockchain technology to enable a large number of smaller transactions to occur that would not be possible with traditional mechanisms. So if you take this self-sovereign blockchain identity management system and you plug it into all the other platforms that this company already provides through Verify Students and Immunitrax, you've got the entire biopsychosocial aggregate of a student's personal profile that you can aggregate for social credit hooked up to a blockchain and internet of things that could in real time through facial recognition determine the student's access to any number of institutions in the larger public square. And I think it's interesting to note the graphics that are used here on this page. So take a look up here and note the graphics. 
So everybody in this graphic has a device in his or her hand. They look like smartphones or really, really small tablets. And they are beaming some sort of photoelectronics into their faces. And if you see the facial recognition geometry all over their faces. So all those little triangulations on the man and the woman's faces, the aggregate of the various angles on the composite of each person's face adds up to a unique number, a unique signature, a unique aggregate that is their biometric ID. And if you see underneath it, it says facial recognition right here. So they're telling you that that's what that is. If you haven't ever seen what some of those algorithms look like when they're graphed on a computer. And then here you can see, here's a 3D version of his facial scan, but it's also linked to look, some sort of a total body biometric image here. And then it's got some other bar graphs or some sort of a EKG looking line graph and then a bunch of other little icons related to these different metrics. And again, over here, other graphs, little pie graphs, little bar graphs related to some other biopsychosocial algorithms, some sort of social credit algorithms, whether it's his or her employment records, health records, education record, criminal background, all of those categories that create the individualized psychological profile that is used for social engineering and a social credit system. All right. So now maybe this looks like a, maybe a fringe company, never heard of it. I never heard of it. Uh, maybe you think this is kind of an isolated startup type company that's still sort of on the fringes of the actual commercial market. Like you won't see this in a store, in a school, at a hospital anytime soon. Let's take a look at their news releases. So if we scroll down a little bit here, you'll see their most recent report, corporate screening awarded group purchasing agreement with Premier, Premier Inc. Okay, so let's take a look at this article here and you'll see Corporate Screening Services Inc. has been awarded a group purchasing agreement for background screening services with Premier Inc. What is Premier Inc.? Let's click on it. Let's look at the about page. Let's scroll down here. You'll see Premier Inc. solving tomorrow's healthcare challenges today. Premier Inc. is a NASDAQ traded corporation. It's a healthcare improvement company that is uniting an alliance of approximately 4,100 US hospitals and health systems and more than 200,000 other providers and organizations. And corporate screening just got a group purchasing contract with this company, meaning it's going to have a lot of contracts. It's going to be working with a lot of hospitals and other providers, in addition to what other schools and other employment services it's already working with. So if you think that this is way out there on the fringes and not likely to pop up at the doorstep of any school, hospital, or other company anytime soon, this press release suggests otherwise. Okay, so in summary, I encourage you to look at your own place of employment, your own school where you might be a student or a teacher, your own hospital where you might be a nurse or other medical professional, and take a look to see perhaps if your particular institution partners with corporate screening and take a look at what particular applications they use and whether or not they are moving in the direction of the self-sovereign identity verification platform in addition to their Immunitrax digital immunity passports. If you are concerned about the use of any such platforms to be aggregated or expanded into social credit databases as the billionaire class at the World Economic Forum are calling for the reimagining of all of our institutions, I would encourage you to humbly and respectfully express to your institution why you have concerns about the expansion of personal 
records, whether they be educational, healthcare, criminal justice, workforce, or otherwise into a single big database that could potentially restrict a person's access to public services and the public square. I hope you found this informative and helpful as you navigate through these crazy times. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below, or you can send them to me at my website, schoolworldorder.info. If you enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks so much for your time. Peace. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you'd like to check out more of my research, go to my website, schoolworldorder.info, where you can find archives of all my interviews, all my articles, and a bibliography of all my citations. There's also links to all my social media and video platforms, and you can sign up for my email list too where you will receive notifications whenever I produce a new article, interview, or video. To support my work, become a research member for just $5 a month, and you'll gain access to my WebBrain database, which contains Charlotte Thompson Iserbeet's archive of U.S. Department of Education files and other rare historical documents. The database will be updated with weekly document dumps, and you will be notified whenever I upload a new dossier. Thanks again for watching. Peace.